Okay, so here we are with part three of this how to paint a landscape series. So I'll have the cards pop up here and I'll have the links in the description to part one and two uh, right below here. But anyways, so I'm getting to work on the, the middle ground of this landscape today. So I'm gonna be working on all these blue mountains in the background, as well as all the details in these larger mountains here. I'm gonna show you how to layer the highlights and the shadows and blend it in to this dark portion of the painting up here. And uh, so at this point, we've got uh, at least the acrylic portion of it completed all the way from the sky into the mountains back here. Now, this foreground area will come in the next video. So I'll have at least four videos now and we'll do the foreground. I'm gonna add a doll sheep to this painting. So of course, if you've watched part, part one of this series, this is from the Brooks Range in Alaska, the, the heart of doll sheep country. And so I'm, I'm thinking it's only appropriate that I add a sheep down here. And so we'll get to that in the next video. But anyways, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint this background area and the foliage. So let's get started. Well, we have our blocked in mountain range, which you saw me complete in the first part of this series. And as I just kind of revisit this now and take a little bit of a closer look, um, I really didn't put any detail in these these back ridges and I'm not quite certain that this is the right color. Um, I think this is a good base, but I wanna start with these back hills and just work my way forward. So we're gonna work on this one here, uh, this here, that here, then I'll work on this one here. And then once that's done, I'll work on uh, probably all of this at the same time not the shaded part, but everything kind of in the light right through here. And then uh, once that's complete, I'll work on getting this part filled in, this dark area, and then I'll be ready for this bit of foreground that you can see down in the lower right. So let's get to work on these blue mountains. So let's go over to the palette here. And I have a few colors here already laid out. We have titanium white, phthalo blue, quinacridone magenta, cad yellow light, and then I just got some new, I was out before of this, I've just got some burnt umber. I had been using raw umber, but I've got some burnt umber now, so let me stick with that and see how that goes. I'm gonna pick up some white and add some blue. I've been working on the white balance and the contrast exposure of my camera. So hopefully this palette cam matches everything that's on the actual painting right now, just a little bit better. You test this out, so that's quite a bit lighter. And I'm gonna add some magenta. I'm gonna use this darker color. I think that's going to be pretty close. Yeah, so I actually, I actually like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do this is actually insanely simple when you move to mountain ranges like this because, and the reason I say that is because when we're working on the sky, things need to appear uh, a lot more smooth and those blends of color need to be smooth. It's just things you gotta worry about. When it comes to mountains and when it comes to landscape detail, any texture could be a good texture. So there's a lot of textures in nature. And so I actually think it's even easier sometimes to paint mountain ranges because there can be so many textures. As long as you have the colors right, things usually fall into place how they should. Oh, 
Okay, so I've laid in this lighter color here. And actually, while I have that color, it's a good idea to finish the rest of this ridge back here with the same color so that you don't have to remix it. I've already got it. So this is a little more gray. You can see as this goes on, it just kind of tones it back, lightens it up a bit. I'm going to use my finger just to spread that out up top. Perfect. Okay, and yeah, we'll put some right through here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, what I need to try to do here is create a little bit more of a gray. I'm gonna add some magenta to this blue. So I've added some magenta along with some burnt umber. Mixed it into here. Okay, I'm gonna... Mm, to give this a try so I'm just gonna lay down a quick color there so I've got it right here and I'm just gonna let that dry for a second and just kind of see if that's the color that I'm looking for might be able to add a little bit take some blue and an umber so that's just a little bit of a darker tone. Mix that in, that's just gonna darken it down a bit. Add some water. Okay. Okay, I think that's going to be better. Now, what I'm gonna do, so what this color is going to represent is the highlights on these distant mountains. So just like we have this color down through here, it's a much more vibrant color, saturated, because it's closer to us. As we go way back here, there's a lot more atmosphere in between. This more of a gray, warmer tone is gonna look like highlights just like this, but diluted down with a lot of atmosphere. So we'll just see them slightly on this distant Ridge line. And I'm loosely following the reference. It doesn't have to be exact. Just get the pattern down. Pretty simple.
little more white to this mixture. Just brighten some of these up a bit. Of course, this acrylic will dry slightly darker, so sometimes it just goes on light. You think it's too light. It's usually about right if you think it's just a little bit too white or too light. Okay. Beautiful. All right. That looks good. So really like how that's coming together. We have some dark tones on the top of that mountain. We don't have them right here, and I could probably add them. Let's take some blue. Some umber, some magenta, a little bit more blue. Mix some white in there. Kind of creating a dull blue. It's going to be too dark. Just kind of tested it over the top. Still a little bit too light now. Perfect. Ah, the blue isn't right, so I'm going to add some magenta. Sometimes it can be a lot of hard work just to get the right color. Okay, so we've got a slightly darker tone. Just going on the top of that mountain range. Perfect. Just adds enough contrast up there that I think it really enhances it. Now, let's move on to this mountain range right here. And I think the first thing that I want to do, since I already have kind of a white tone here, I'm going to add some umber to that whitish, bluish tone. And I think that's actually going to be the correct color. We're going to add some highlights. So you have to imagine that's a face of that mountain range that's sitting about like that. So the sun's coming down like this, and it's hitting that face of the mountain. And up top, got some more highlights right along the top of this ridge. And down below, right here, another one. Can 
I pat the brush. I apologize, I don't think I've talked about the brush I'm using today. It's just a it's a number two round brush. Just an old cheapy from Artist Loft. Okay. Looks pretty good. I think that that will play out very nicely. I'm just kind of adding some additional detail. This is not really in the reference photo. But, kind of use your imagination to add some. Might actually add just a little bit up top here. There we go. Okay. So we've got a nice mountain right here. We've got mountains behind it. I think that's looking very nice. I'm going to take some more blue. Add some white to this. I'm going to try to just darken Couple spots, some magenta. I'm gonna try to just darken a couple spots on this ridge just so you can separate the two ridges. There you go. Now you can just have just a little bit more of a separation. It's probably just a good idea. Okay. Yeah, I like that much better. And I might actually, just like we did with that far ridge, we add a little bit of darker color up top. I think I can get away with that. And this mountain as well. So I'm just mixing some umber and some blue, just kind of darkening down a blue color. Just give some shadow to this ridge line through here. Perfect. Okay. Now, the next thing is just kind of look through here. I want to move on to this mountain range right through here. And I think what I'm going to start with probably doesn't make much of a difference. I'm just going to go ahead and start with some of the grays up top, just because that's up that's up high. Let's just go ahead and work our way down. So let's kind of mix an in-between gray here. I'm going to pick up umber, some blue, some magenta. Okay, so we've got a nice warm gray. A little bit more blue to that. I think I'm gonna grab more umber and magenta. Okay, this needs to be darker, so I'm going to grab all three colors. Just get some darker color here, mix that in. So it gives us a bit of a darker gray. Okay, I think this is what I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to take this gray. Just start adding little bits of texture here and there. So all through here, just sort of tapping on some texture. So when it comes to 
making these mountains look real. It's not necessarily about getting everything in the perfect spot. It's more or less mimicking that texture in the, in the appropriate areas. So just kind of try to get that texture going, whether it's a small grainy texture, sort of an elongated texture, a bunch of long strokes, things like that, kind of spotty, maybe some rocky areas. As long as you can sort of mimic those different textures, I think things just naturally start to come together. And so I use this small round brush, just kind of roll it on, tap it on. I know that this gray that I've got mixed up lives in a lot of different places on, along this mountain. And so what I try to do is just locate those areas and just swirl on little, little bits of texture, swirl it on, tap it on. can always paint over the top. Really simple to do, just locating different areas. So I don't think there's anything quite more tedious than trying to paint a realistic landscape. These, these landscapes really just come down to the amount of detail you're willing to put into them. Very difficult to do sometimes, just simply on the basis of it's, it's kind of grueling. You just don't see a lot of progress very quickly. It's just slow going all the time but it's really the only way to get to a nice, realistic type of landscape, especially when you're doing something so far away like this mountain. You really have to pay attention to these minor details. They don't make a big difference on a macro level when you zoom way into it, but when you stand back and look at it as a whole, and they start to all work together, all these little textures, and it starts to make sense, and that's kind of when you do see the advantage. So just kind of knowing that, keeping that back of your head, does make a difference. You just don't see it right away. Just painting what I see. Looking at my reference photo, just trying to locate any bit of texture with this color and just give the impression of that being there. So there's lots of little rocks in this area through here. So I'm just trying to leave some of the color I had on there already and I'm trying to just spot some areas throughout that just to kind of give the illusion of some shadows, some different rocks, things like that. Okay, I'm going to pick up 
some blue. I'm just gonna mix some blue into that. A little bit of water. Pick up some magenta as well. Okay. So, this is sort of going to be the highlights within the shadows. There's a little bit of a lighter area that kind of runs through here now. A rock slide. This big glacier bowl. Some rocks live over on the left side here. Kind of tap on some texture. Lightening up, just these are just rock slides. You have to envision these gray lines that I'm laying down are just thousands and thousands of ro smaller rocks that are sliding down through these shoots of the mountain. They're avalanche shoots, most likely. All the way up top, little shoots. Some kind of go horizontally across the mountain face. So just kind of breaking up some of that texture in between. Spot on a couple areas through here. Right on the bottom of these spots, I'm adding this color. So it looks like We've got maybe some grass growing. It's a little bit warmer of a color up top, a little darker. And I add this medium mid-tone gray underneath. So it looks like a shadow underneath whatever that bulge of grass or rock, whatever that is. Now we've got kind of a dark area and it's shadow that's laying down below. Same could kind of be done right through here. Just about out of that color, but I'm just gonna keep going until I run out. Got more gray right through here, little rock slides. Look how we can just create, now it looks like we've got some slides that are just coming through here and it's left some patches of foliage right in between there. Same thing could be done in this shadow as well. Yeah, just adding some texture. The more texture you can add on a smaller scale, I think the more realism you're gonna pull out of it.
but boy is it painstaking. Just takes so long. Okay, I'm going to add a couple up through here. Okay, it's looking good. Slightly lighter right through there. Okay, I'm going to take just a little breather. So we've added a lot of texture just with this one color. I just want you to just think about what I've done here with one color and working that gray across this area and just adding small amounts of texture. I think it's really begun to enhance these two mountains and uh, already it's looking great. So I'm going to take just a breather, maybe wash my cup of water out and then uh, come back and we'll work on uh, probably the, the lighter colors of these, these grays, some of the highlights through here. Okay, let's move on to some of these highlights in the, the rocks, like I was saying. I think we can brighten up some of these areas and um, probably some of this area through here and just some, some various spots. We're just gonna add that additional layer of texture and just continue to start to build and uh, I think things will start to come together rather quickly. So I'm just gonna grab that same brush. I'm gonna pick up some white, along with some umber. And actually, I'm wondering, I'm gonna test this. A couple spots here. Gonna kind of let that dry for a second. That's really close to what we want it to be. I'm just gonna pick up some blue and magenta, a small amount, mix together some violet. Just mix some violet in there. Test it again. Okay, that might have a little bit too much magenta. So I'm just going to mix some light blue. I'm going to mix my light blue into that. And I think that that's going to be good. Let's start over on this side. And I'm going to start with these, there's some rock slides right through here. I'm just using the sharp pointed edge of this brush. Tapping on some like pixelated like texture up top. And then dragging it down, down below. I'm kind of looking for the the areas where I added that that first layer of gray. And I'm trying to maybe leave some of that, kind of go in between. Okay. Yeah, I think that's coming together quite nicely. I'm going to pick up some more white and umber. Just 
just to give it a little bit more of, of a pop. I'm just pixelating on this rock texture. Tap, 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 tap. Got a couple areas down through here. Okay, let's move over to this. So we've got that dark area of blue that comes right down. So we want to go right on top of it. We want that dark area, kind of that triangle-like area, to look like that part of the area of the, the dark spot. This, sorry, this dark triangle, we want it to make it look like that's part of the mountain that's going up like this, almost straight up vertically, and it's being shaded. And then right on top, we want it to make it look like there's a shelf, and that shelf is being hit by the sunlight. And so right against that dark area. I want to add this highlight. And just tap on a couple more textures up higher. Just like that. Perfect. And kind of the same thing. So we imagine this dark area to be a part of the mountain that's curving inward. And as that comes out towards us, we want it to look like it's curving back towards the sunlight, and the sunlight's hitting the right side there. So right up against it, we're going to add some highlights. Brighten that one up again. Perfect. Now, same kind of thing. We're looking for those dark shadows, and we're just creating a really bright highlight above it. Kind of wetting that up with some water. Perfect. Now I'm going to just pixelate some areas through here, look, make it look like a bunch of boulders laying down right through this area. A lot of this can be just really random. Again, we're just looking for the overall pattern. We're trying to mimic that. It doesn't have to be perfect in relation to the reference photo. Kind of break up a couple of these spots. Okay. I think it's about time to move 
before I do this, before I move on any further, I want to take some more umber. Just kind of mix that in with this white. I just want to, this is pretty gray through here. I just want to add some brown. Just add a little bit of color. Just through a couple of these spots, just warm it up a bit. You can even add some, just kind of move it around with your finger. Those warm tones will just make that appear that that sun's a little bit warmer. Perfect. You may or may not be able to see that going on. It's really light, but boy, does that, I think it makes a difference. Grab a little more. That helps it blend it into some of the surrounding area. Okay, so what I'd like to do now, I'm gonna to move to more of a brownish color. There's some areas right through here that could use some more saturated tones and through here and also down through here. So I'm gonna probably start by just grabbing the same type of colors here. And I'm gonna add some blue and white. So we've got kind of a light blue there. I'm gonna mix that into our umber and white that I've got down here. I'm gonna add more umber, mix into that light blue. Just a touch more blue. Okay. Starting to get closer there. Mm. A little bit more of that same mixture. Umber and blue. Okay, that's about the tone that I'm looking for. Kind of a warm gray. Perfect. I think that'll do. So this would essentially be moss or grass, things like that on the mountain, kind of around all these rocks and stones. Add a little bit of that color up in here. Okay, I'm going to add, I think we can go a bit darker. Probably just stick with this right here, darker tone. I think I want things to be slightly more gray. So I'm going to add some magenta and blue together, and that'll just help that gray that down, dull it down. So it's still warmer than some of those gray tones I added before. It's about the same contrast though. It's about the same value. And I'm just looking just to make sure I fill in all the cracks of the canvas right now. And some of this may not match the reference photo precisely, but again, this becomes my mountain. It doesn't have to be just like the reference.
Oh, Bob Ross was right. This is your world. Make it how you want. So I'm, I'm loosely following the reference right now. I, there's not quite as many warm tones, but just like the clouds, the further you get along, you start to just see things come together in your own mind. And if you just follow that, things become much more... much more relaxing, less stressful. Okay. I'm going to pick up a little more umber and white. A little bit of blue. This is a little bit brighter. Gonna highlight some of the tops of these areas. And same thing can be done. through here. <clears throat> As we get close to this crick, we're eventually going to kind of lose a, all that white down in there. Just have that white so I know where it is. We get to some of this area over here yet too. This part over here doesn't quite match the reference, but it actually looks pretty good. So I'm just tapping the brush. I'm letting the brush do the work for me. Okay. Looking good. Now, before I get into, I'm gonna grab a little more of this color. Before I get into some of these green highlights through here, I still want to do some work on some some of the rocks. So I'm going to mix up some blue, some magenta, a little bit of umber. It's more blue heavy though. I'm going to add some white. A little more blue. Okay, that's going to darken it down. Now I think a little more magenta. Make sure that magenta is mixed in there well. Okay, that's that's about that color of these darker rocks. So there's some rocks that I'm missing here that I'd like to add. So I'm kind of inspecting both the reference photo and what I've got going on the canvas. I'm just envisioning we got highlights through here. We've got some minor shadows and I'm looking to add some really dark shadows. And so I'm trying to go on the upper side of those medium, those mid, mid-tone shadows. And just like we have some dark areas up top and all these mountains, I'm trying to add that to some of these smaller shadows throughout the, the mountainside here. Just to kind of give everything a uniform look.
I'm just imagining rocks sitting along this hillside, casting in dark shadow. Okay, I'm going to add some white to this mixture, so we're going to brighten it up a bit. Add some magenta. Okay, a little more white. Doesn't take a lot. Try that. A little more of this dark color. I think that'll be perfect. Okay, so all these areas that I added through here, you know, one, two, a couple areas through here, I want to add some darker shadows within those. So these are all just different shadows within shadows. And some of them go really dark, some of them are kind of a medium mid-tone. So this just gives more texture to the mountain, more variety. And, you know, I think thus it's going to create more realism. And we'll see if I can't. Even if it looks like it's going on like the same color that's already there, it's still going to dry a little bit differently and that's going to add some variety. And I think that's important. So it's you really can't lose. So I'm looking for any areas right now, number one, that aren't covered by paint. So there's some specks, some texture in the canvas that aren't quite covered. I just want to make sure those are covered first and foremost. But that's also just adding texture for me, which is good. And then second of all, I just kind of keep, keep on doing what I'm doing, trying to add boulders. Boulder could exist anywhere. break up some of this through here. Look at that, these little boulders just popping up all over. Suddenly that's looking really cool. We'll add one, two, three, four, a couple there, there, there. And those highlighted areas suddenly look more dynamic. Perfect. Add a little, get, get a little bit more of that darker tone, add it in, just try to extend that color that I have. If I can get it to go all the way, I'll be happy. We'll see. Spot, 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 spot. So certainly is tedious. Back here I could add a couple couple shadows as well. Kind of sharpen up the top of the mountain too.
Okay, break up some of this area. Watch, just spot it on some random shadows through here. And that all of a sudden is looking much better. Sure doesn't take much. Break up some of this area down through here. Look at that, just a little bit and all of a sudden that area is looking better. Perfect. It's looking good. I'm just gonna drag, I've got a little bit of, little bit of paint on the brush. And I'm just gonna drag it across some of these areas and the texture of the canvas is just gonna pick that up and just add some very fine texture that can also help enhance. Very minor, you might not even be able to notice a whole lot here. But look at that, when I just drag, you see these couple spots that just go on. Kinda of see the texture of the canvas, so that's just kinda of what I'm doing. Very minor. And this is hard on your brush too, which is why I use cheap brushes. Pick up a little more, it's really dry now. Perfect, okay. Okay, so let's move on to some of those greenish highlights that I was talking about. So I got some white. I'm going to pick up some umber and some blue. I'm going to add a touch of yellow. Okay, and I'm going to test this. Okay, it needs to be much brighter. I'm going to pick up some white. I'm going to grab some of that. I'm just going to move it over here. I'm going to add some yellow. Try this again. So that's much brighter. It's getting there. I think I can still use I'm going to take some yellow and umber. Just want it to be more saturated. Take some blue and some umber. I'm going to mix that in. A little more umber. Okay, I think that that's going to be close. I'm going to grab some more white though. A little yellow and white. Brighten it up a touch. Okay, now I'm not going to worry about texture right away here. I just want to get everything a little bit closer to the finished result. So. Add some more white. Okay, now this is going to be kind of the color of the the crick bed right in the middle here. So I'm going to cover that white. Just go ahead and get that out of there. Kind of know where it is now. Not too worried about losing it. Pull some of these highlights this direction too. We don't want that many though going that way. So 
So that's going to start to brighten everything up. Go right over the top. Some of these highlights down through here. Add a couple to this area. And so the reason I'm not adding highlights to this area, even though it should be exposed to the sun, we want also the clouds to appear like they're casting some shadows down through here. So not everything's going to be highlighted. So we want to do be a little bit, a little bit picky. I'm going to grab some umber. Just add umber to that. Just change the valley, the, the tone of that a little bit. Bring it to more of an orangish look. We're going to have some browns in here now. So again, first and foremost, just making sure I cover everything with paint. I don't want canvas showing through. And so the reason why all of this is so dark down below here is because this is going to be one big shadow casted by a cloud. Okay, we're getting there. Got a little bit more of that paint. Cover up some of these areas. Okay, it's looking pretty good. now. Next thing I want to do is add maybe another layer of highlights through here. So I want to pick up some white. I'm just going to go ahead and add, mix white right into this mixture we had. I'm going to add some umber to that. A little more umber. I'm going to test this out. Okay, that's probably about the right color. So hopefully this will start to stand out a bit. Go ahead and add some more white number, just brighten it up even more. There we go, okay. Now, this is very random and I'm just kind of, I know that there's colors that are like this in the area, but I'm not being exact with it. I'm just using my best judgment. I'm just adding those highlights through there. Spotting a couple up here. Okay. 
adding a few down through here. A little bit brighter. Add a couple down through here. Spot a couple on right there. Okay. I want to add some more highlights to some of these areas. I'm just picking up some white here. And I'm going to add some blue because I don't want that to be quite as warm. A little more white. Okay, add a little more white there. Now hopefully this will be even brighter than everything. And I'm going to go back to some of those rocky areas. And hopefully this will kind of be the final touch. So I want to brighten it up. Tap my finger. Look how I can just spread that around. Use the texture of the canvas. Okay, now I'm just going to spot on some rocks right through here. A couple. Okay, I'm going to drag across. I'm going to take my finger and just kind of pull that down. Make some of it disappear. Okay, now you can kind of see the creek bed, and I'm going to use this color and just add. There will, there are some rocks all over the place, really out here, so I'm just going to add some of this texture. Again, you can add the texture, kind of drag it away, and it just softens it up a bit. So add a bunch around, soften the area up. Add some through here, soften it up. So that texture of the canvas is gonna to start to show. It's gonna make it look a lot more detailed than it is with really minimal amount of effort. Okay, I'm going to add some yellow to this. A little umber as well. Perfect. Now, just spotting on some highlights in the grassy portion.
I'm really just running with my imagination now. Okay, I'm going to add some more umber. Some more brownish tones. And I'm going to start to just break up some of this area as well. Always glaze over the top if it doesn't quite look right. I'm going to add some blue and umber, more umber. Okay, so this is darker. I'm going to try this out real quick. A little bit too dark. Mix in some white. Okay, so this is kind of a shadow. I'm going to start to blend some of these shaded areas around. Get more umber and yellow. There we go, a little more saturated. Perfect. A lot more saturation. I like that color. I'm going to add some more. This is kind of glazing. A little more control though, kind of adding some detail with it. Right at the bottom, look how that just saturates things now. Love it. A couple areas through here, a little more sparingly through here. A little bit more on this side. So this is where all the magic lies, really, is just making sure that color is there. Texture is kind of easy, but getting the right colors is always important. Looking good. A couple more areas up here. Okay. I'm going to take some white and umber. I'm going to add magenta and yellow, kind of an orange color. So this is going to be a brighter orange, hopefully. A little more white added to that orange. Try this. I want to make a couple areas pop a little bit with some kind of more of an orange color. So I'm going to add some more. There we go. This is a brighter orange color. Spot on a few areas. Again, it's all about just different color textures. And they start to play together. Okay, I think all of that's looking really good. Yeah, 
add some up through here. My brush is getting really worn out, but that also creates some unique texture for me, which I like. Perfect. Okay. Last thing I might want to try to do, so I'm going to grab some of this color right here. It's kind of an in-between color. And I want to try to soften the edges of these major shadows. So I'm kind of overlapping into both areas with this color so it creates sort of an intermediate color which ends up softening everything. Bridges the gap between the highlights and the shadows. Okay. Perfect. to wet some of that again. Keep it going just a little bit longer. We're almost there. Excellent. Okay, last thing we're going to do is we're going to move to this dark area. All right, so now I want to move to this dark portion. And the way I'm going to go about that, I'm just thinking here, I want to go ahead and get a solid color on here first that is the most dominant color. So this is close, but I'm thinking I'd rather, might make it a two-tone color actually, um, get two dominant colors on here. So first thing I'm going to do is pick up a bit of a larger brush. So I'm going to go with this, uh, this is just under a half inch filbert brush. And I'm going to grab the burnt umber the white, I'm sorry, the blue, that's not white, a little bit of magenta, a little bit more blue, okay, I am going to grab a touch of white, probably some more blue, just to whiten that just a touch. A little bit more. Of the magenta, add a touch of water, keep it flowing. Okay. So, eh, more magenta. All right, now, this should be the darker color of this whole area. So I'm going to start to get this darker color on. And I'm kind of looking at the reference photo. It's very difficult because it is so dark. But those subtleties 
in this dark area is going to make a big difference. So we've got kind of a, we've got another creek that's going to be going through here. So I'm going to try to make that somewhat visible. So I've got an area of dark coming down to it and some more dark coming down to it from this direction and that crease can be kind of right in the middle and you, you, you might be able to see it. Hopefully you can, but it is really dark. A lot of this too can be just kind of made up as you go because when you're dealing with something this dark, as long as the texture is somewhat reasonable, kind of matches the reference photo in some regards, it's, it's going to look all right. Already that looks a whole lot better. You can start to see those dark areas stand out from the initial layer of paint. <clears throat> okay. Looking pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some white and blue. And so I'm kind of mixing the same color up here, but, and I'm gonna need more umber. Kind of mixing the same color up here, but lighter and a little bit more blue. Okay, so I'm going to try this. A little more blue. Okay, I'm going to take some white and blue. So this is a lighter blue. I'm going to mix it in. little magenta to that. Okay. Now this, this color will become the highlights. So hopefully You can see that start to show up. It's super subtle. Might even add some more white. Mix it into the magenta here. It doesn't have to be, of course, this doesn't have to be identical to the reference photo. Could brighten it up a little bit if you want to. But I'm using this larger brush because I just want to cover ground at this point. I want to get it really close. It might not be perfect, but I want to move quick. I'm kind of washing on some of this color up top here. So 
there's kind of a blue wash over the top of some of these dark shadows. You can even take this blue. That was a little bit too much. Add some water. A little bit more blue. Got a light blue right here. Just kind of mix it in. I think I can go with more magenta. There we go. So I'm just washing some blue tone over the top of some of this area. Pretty light and subtle. But it's going to kind of unify all these shadows just having the same kind of color of blue. That's about all you need to do. It just kind of just brings everything together. Okay, I'm going to add some white and umber. Mix it in. Look at that, so it adds a little bit of color. And it sort of ties that in to that background. Just lovely. Use the same color. Look at that, just streaking it across. That's gonna look so... so nice against that background. Just kind of blends everything together. Soft is good. Mm. Love it. This is a great in-between color between the highlights and shadows, and it's really making some of these transition zones pop. Very loosely washing this down. I'm going to take a step back from the painting, just kind of look. Perfect. Love it. Okay. So, I think what I want to do now is move away from that larger brush. And I want to add 
some smaller details. So I'm going to go back. Yeah, I'm going to go back to this liner brush. I'm going to take some burnt sienna. Sorry, that's not burnt sienna. Burnt umber. Too many colors. I'm going to add it to this dark blue mixture with a little bit of white. <clears throat> so that's going to gray it down, dull it down a little bit, warm it up. A little bit more white. I want that just, just to be bright enough where we can see it. There we go. I'm going to start to use this color to add texture to all the shaded area. Now, a lot of this will be so subtle, you won't even really, I don't think the viewer will even look at it too much. We just want it to be there. But, boy, I'm really not super concerned about it. it does help though, small subtleties make a painting really good. So this area is going to go a lot quicker. Okay. It's looking good already. I think what I want to do is move to some darker shadows again. Blue and umber. A little magenta. More magenta. It's kind of got a green look to it right now. Test this out. Tad bit of white. I'm just mixing a small amount of white off to the side and then adding it. Okay, and I'm going to test this out. Still think it's too green. Okay. There we go. And here's where some magic happens where we're adding some three-dimensional objects into the shaded area. So I'm going right over the top of that nice blend we created, but now we're going to create some structure. So it's going to look like we've got a, maybe a rock that's coming through here. It's casting a hard shadow. So we're just going to play into this nice smooth transition zone we created and add texture and make it kind of just match, match what's behind it. So these would essentially be the rocks that we added back here. Now we're adding those same rocks to the dark foreground. It's really going to bring things together. You can already tell. It's going to look just fantastic. I love it already. Okay. Mm, I, mm. It's looking good.
Wow, what small details. Makes such a big difference. Hope you can see that. It's just come together beautifully. That just that small amount. Wow. I'm impressed. more water, keep that flowing. This makes your painting look much more confident by adding these sharp edges. Not too worried about this area right here. I think I'm gonna have a doll sheep perched right on this little flat area. It's gonna look like we're overlooking all of this, but that will come perhaps in the next video. Kind of use the same color to add a few dark rocks back here, but I don't want to be—I don't want it to be quite as dark because I want it to make it look like it's just getting further and further. We do have to have things get lighter as we go back. Okay. All right, I think that we have a completed background. I think the mountains are looking good. I'm not sure what else I'm gonna do. I might add just some slight details as I move forward. But again, just remember that this painting isn't done yet. It doesn't have to be, I don't have to be uh, necessarily stuck with anything at this point. So can continue to work on it. When I get into the final stages of the painting, I might want to brighten some of these highlights just to make things pop a bit more. So I could take some white, just add some brighter highlights. So you can see how bright that gets, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, I think that I'm gonna call these mountains tentatively completed. And I'm gonna move on to the foreground. And that will come in the next video. All right, so I'm really pumped with this painting so far. It's coming together beautifully. After I took a step back and moved the camera for this, this final recap here, um, I'm really happy with it, being able to really step back. And I think that's something that I encourage all of you to do, is if you're really getting involved into a painting and you're, you're focusing on the small details like we did today, just take a step back. Just remember to stop every once in a while, get away from it, maybe even leave the room, come back and stand back from a distance and really assess what's going on. Uh, I think I have a better idea of where I wanna go with this if I add oil paint over the top, and I think I'm going to. But anyways, um, I'm excited about it. So once I did step back, I'm just really happy with how this is coming together. I can't wait to show you the next part of this when we get to the foreground. Uh, but until then, 
Thank you for watching. Remember that if you'd like to support my channel, please check out my free print giveaway, as always, as well as my eBay auctions and website and all of those links are in the description below. Remember that I auction off all the paintings I do here in the videos through my eBay. Again, guys, thank you so much for your continued support and for watching. We will see you next time.